I'm Chris Lee from the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, and I am here this morning to talk about sudden oak death. This first part of the video will be an introduction to sudden oak death. Have you seen sudden oak death in your part of the world? You may be wondering what it is, what its effects are going to be, what the future of oaks and tan oaks are going to be in your part of California. Hopefully this talk will give you a little bit of an introduction to it. We'll move on later to a second part which will discuss management some approaches to how you can deal with the disease. But let's get started on what sudden oak death is. Sudden oak death is a tree disease that is caused by a pathogen known as Phytophthora remorum. This picture shows some sudden oak death effects in Humboldt County. This was several years ago, and at this site since then, we've seen the disease kill more trees. We've seen some of these trees fall down. The landscape has changed in interesting ways. Phytophthora remorum is a pathogen that's called an oomycete. Oomycetes are similar to fungi. They're microscopic. They're not quite fungi. They have some differences. They make some different kinds of spores. And the network of fibers that make up the pathogen body, if you will, you can see them in these electron microscope pictures. They're a little bit different than those of true fungi. But for all intents and purposes, we can treat them in many ways as if they were fungi because they share a lot of the same characteristics. They like moisture and they like nice, mild temperatures to grow. So when those conditions are right, the pathogen does very well. Now, when Phytophthora remorum attacks oak and tan oak trees, it does so in a couple of possible different ways. And so that can manifest itself differently in different host plants. One of the ways that it attacks some plants is by attacking the vascular cambium. That's the red zone in this picture. That's the part of the tree that's under the bark and it produces the tissues that both conduct water and that conduct nutrients from the leaves where they are produced down through the rest of the plant. Sometimes also the pathogen, and this depends partly on the host tree, can attack the xylem, which is the actual plumbing system of the tree that carries water. It's a little farther into the tree and it conducts water up and down and the pathogen can sometimes grow into the vessels that are conducting water and clog them up. Here are some examples of symptoms of sudden oak death on different host plants. Most of these actually are tan oak. The one in the foreground is a camellia plant and a camellia plant is not one that we normally see growing in our wildland areas in California but it's one of the ways that Phytophthora remorum probably got into the wildlands. We think that sometime back in the late 80s or early 90s, Phytophthora remorum arrived from somewhere else in the world on ornamental plants, rhododendrons, camellias, and other similar ornamental plants. And it made those symptoms that you see on the leaves there, they weren't very conspicuous to whoever was bringing the plants over, and they weren't very conspicuous to whoever was planting them, but they got planted out in the wildland, and then they got transported um, on uh, air currents that are wet in droplets of water, in running water, various different ways to the tan oaks and oaks that are out there in the forest. You can see that the symptoms of sudden oak death can include a gradual yellowing of the plant sometimes, so the tan oak in your upper left hand corner has that symptom. The one in the upper right hand corner is bleeding. So there's a sap that's coming out of the trunk of the tree. And sometimes it can be quite heavy. Sometimes it can be just one or two little spots. Um, on the lower left, you see a tan oak that has a wilt-like symptom of the new shoots of the tree. And on the lower right, you can see why this pathogen was called sudden oak death. It's because when the tree finally succumbs to the pathogen, it appears to just turn brown all at once without warning. Um, here's some more close up pictures of some of the symptoms of the disease. And I also wanna talk about and mention that really what we call sudden oak death is two different kinds of diseases 
um, it's not just sudden oak death, it's also Phytophthora remorum foliar blight. And those are, those are two separate diseases and they show up on different hosts. Sudden oak death is the disease that causes the host to actually die. It attacks mostly true oaks and tan oaks. Of the true oaks, it's the oak trees that are in the so-called red oak group. And so for us, this includes California black oak, coast live oak, shreve oak, and um, then sudden oak death also manifests on tan oaks, as I mentioned. And on these hosts, it causes these stem lesions. That's what makes the bleeding come out from um, the outside of the bark. And if you peel the bark off, you'll see that there are areas of dead tissue underneath, which is what that red arrow is pointing to. Um, and this, as I said, does kill adult plants. Sometimes it kills them slowly, sometimes it kills them a little more quickly. That might depend on the pre-existing condition of the tree, or it might depend on environmental conditions. We're not completely sure. Phytophthora remorum foliar blight attacks most of the other hosts, and there are over 100 hosts for Phytophthora remorum. And Phytophthora remorum foliar blight causes um, various kinds of leaf lesions or shoot diebacks. So in these plants, usually Phytophthora remorum can infect the softer or more succulent twig or leaf tissues, but not actually get into the whole plant and kill it. Here's just a list of all of those different hosts. This is actually not all of them. This was current as of several years ago. The ones that are in big font are the ones that are most important, either because the pathogen kills them, like with Coast Live Oak or Tan Oak, or because they're carriers for the pathogen. So the pathogen makes its spores and reproduces on them and then gets onto the hosts that it does kill. Um, California Bay Laurel is the most important carrier host that we have out there in the forest in California. It does not get killed itself, but it is responsible for prolific pathogen reproduction. And all of those spores that are produced on the leaves of the Bay Laurel will go to tan oaks and, and oaks when the environmental conditions are right and when the moisture conditions are right and infect them and kill them. You'll notice that in this list, really almost all of the common wildland plants that we have, at least in the north coast of California, are on the list. So many, many plants are vulnerable in some way to this pathogen. Here are some pictures of sudden oak death on coast live oak, that's on the left, and then a wider landscape view of sudden oak death killing pan oaks, that's down in Big Sur on the lower right. Here is some um, explanation of where the pathogen is distributed in California. So you'll see on the left that sudden oak death is found in 15 coastal or near coastal counties in California. It's also found in Curry County, Oregon. These are places where the pathogen is established out in the forest in California. On the right, you'll see a map that is reflective of where we know that the pathogen is established in Sonoma and Mendocino counties in particular. And when we were going to have these workshops on oak health in a live setting, they were going to be in Hopland in southern Mendocino County and at Rohnert Park at the Fairfield Osborne Preserve of Sonoma State University, which is down there in the southeast part of Sonoma County. You'll notice that that Fairfield Osborne spot is one of the spots that's been hardest hit in Sonoma County. It's one of the first spots that we saw show up. Subsequent to that, the west part of Sonoma County has been very heavily infested, and the red dots in the west part of Sonoma County are actually not reflective of how severe the disease is, because if it were, there would be many, many more dots there. Sonoma County is perhaps the hardest hit county by sudden oak death in California overall. Another spot where it showed up early on very heavily was Santa Cruz County. And of course, as you can see, Marin County is also part of that sort of epicenter. We think that sudden oak death was probably introduced in the Marin area and the Santa Cruz area independently, but at about the same time, sometime back in the 90s. 
This is a genetic tree that shows um, if you look on the right, you have some, some um, letters that start with EU and then some that start with US. These are different strains of Phytophthora remorum. So this pathogen is one species, but there are several different genetic individuals or strains that are out there in the world. And the EU strains for many years were only known to be in Europe. The US strains were only known to be here in the United States. Unfortunately, because of our global trade in plants and plant products and plant parts, these strains do tend to move around. And we have recently found the EU strains showing up in Oregon in the forest infecting tanoaks, and that's a problem because if the EU1 strain and the US strain get together and reproduce, we don't know what sort of individual will result from those. It might be more aggressive on trees. It may travel around the forest in a different way. There are all sorts of possibilities. Just as when people get together and have a kid, you never know what kinds of characteristics are gonna show up. I think we're getting close to the end of our introduction here. I wanted to talk a little bit about how Phytophthora remorum actually gets from tree to tree in the forest. It needs moist conditions and it needs to be able to get from tree to tree somehow in a little droplet of water. So these, you know, it's very similar to our current COVID-19 phenomenon in that Phytophthora remorum needs to be encased in some sort of micro droplet of water in order to survive long enough to get from tree to tree. And it can do that in splashing water. It can do that in big droplets of water that are blowing during storms. And it can potentially do that in water that's running along the ground. As long as there's free water there, the pathogen can survive. And so what we see is that the infection events in California are usually tied to storm events and to heavy precipitation. And the warmer the times of year when that precipitation happens, especially during times like April or May, then the larger our infection events tend to be. If there is standing water on the surface of leaves for several days in a row, then millions and millions of infective spores can be produced on those leaves and they can be transferred over to other trees. That's the end of our introduction. Thanks for your attention. And in part two, we'll talk a little bit about management. Thank you.